Hey guys. I think I already said good morning to you, but um, anyway. Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday, January something, 13th, maybe, I think. I know it's Sunday. I'm pretty sure it's the 13th. Anyway, getting ready to actually go out and meet with the family uh, just across the border, about an hour away in Washington State and celebrate my dad's 80th birthday. Everybody say happy birthday, dad. <laughs> um, we're gonna go out to eat and have some family time. They want to do a family uh, video conference call with my siblings who can't be here, which is gonna be interesting because I think we're gonna be in the middle of the restaurant. So yeah, <laughs> anyway, and I get to teach them all how to Zoom. If you don't know what Zoom is, it's a video conferencing app. I'll link it in the description below. <sighs> yes, in the meantime, uh, the kids are coming with us. Lily will be here created while we're gone. She is an escape artist, so we are closing all the doors just in case she gets out, but yeah. Usually she's okay here, but just in case. <laughs> I don't know. Usually she escapes and eats things she shouldn't at her parents' house, and by things she shouldn't, I mean, oops, shoes, Christmas ornaments, socks, you know. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. All right, I'll be back. Outside Sherry's in Kelso, Washington. We just got done. See that guy back there? That's my dad. We just got done celebrating his birthday, and now we're headed home. So it's been a good morning so far. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday morning, January 14th. I only know because I looked. It's 10:06 a.m. Again, the clock is like right there. Um, my dad is coming to spend the night for dinner because we're taking him to the airport in the morning. I think I said that yesterday. He's going on a visit to go help with my, some stuff, car stuff my brother has going on. They're both auto mechanics and occasionally he needs my dad's input and expertise from years of repairing vehicles and building hot rods and that sort of thing. So um, we're gonna take him to the airport in the morning. We're much closer to the airport than he is and he can leave his car here rather than leaving it in airport parking. So anyway, now that we're living in the Portland area. But he's coming tonight so I need to get something for dinner. <laughs> so I'm gonna go head out and see if I can find some ravioli, some decent ravioli. I'm kind of debating if I wanna go to the thrift store do I want to just go to Safeway, not my favorite store up here, or do I want to drive to Fred Meyer? I have no idea. I, I, I'm clueless at the moment. So, I'll decide and I'll let y'all know. I'll be back. Since I don't really want to go out today, I'd rather be doing other things. I think I'm going to just go to Safeway. It's not my favorite store. Um, the Safeway up here just doesn't have... I don't want to say good quality food, but I don't think it's everything, but for some reason, every single time we buy lunch meat there, every time, it goes bad before the expiration date. So I don't know what's with that, like at all, but maybe it's the refrigeration um, section where the meat's stored, I don't know. But I have just found that we need to be careful what we buy there. So that being said, it's not my favorite store. Um, 
but it is close and they do have a decent selection of pre-made raviolis. I'd rather, I, I don't really want to make ravioli. If I was going to do homemade ravioli, I should have started like two days ago because it's um, a labor intensive thing to do. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'm going to just go buy some. I could use a couple of other things too so we'll see what they have that's a good quality if it's going to be eaten right away then that's fine if it's going to be in the fridge for a couple of days i don't trust it so i don't know it's weird anybody else ever have that because it's just new to us all right i'll be back
everybody. I've been up since an, uh, an obnoxiously early time of the morning. It's Tuesday. I almost said December. January 15th. Um, I only know that because two reasons. One, my dad was here overnight last night. And um, we cooked, I cooked my made tomato sauce. First batch of tomato sauce in the new house, anyway. Cooked for him. And my husband took him to the airport really early this morning. Um, and tomorrow is his birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. So anyway, um, it is currently 7.37 in the morning. But I've been up since 5.30. I've already had my two cups of coffee. I might need a third today. We're going to finally go get all these white roots taken care of later this afternoon. In the meantime, I'm going to go upstairs and do my daily postings and then take a shower and actually put actual clothes on because this is part of my pajamas. <laughs> all right, I should also that. say that this is a weird week. I had Mark Montano tag me in a Facebook post yesterday which is weird. We don't know each other. When famous or semi-famous people do things like that or try to contact you, it's odd and off-putting. And I always immediately think it's some kind of mistake or um, that there's something fishy about it. <clears throat> I've done too much um, work over the years with and for people um, and companies, you know, that they expect me to do for free. And I am trying to make a business or a living at doing art. And I watched a broadcast from another YouTuber recently. I'll link it in the description below. Anyway, uh, about how companies and corporations just expect us now to do uh, work for free for them. I'm going to do free stuff and share with you all and my Facebook groups, but if you want me to do some artwork for you or for your company, I am trying to make a living at this. So it's just, the whole thing was just weird and it might be innocent and it might just be fine. It was odd. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. All right. I'm going to do my postings. I'm upstairs and I'll be back. I lost track a little bit of what I did and didn't say because I uh, was editing the vlog and getting some morning work done and then um, straightening up the house a little bit, getting the dishes, morning dishes done and hoping, I, hoping against hope that I had time to leave the house a little early for my hair appointment because I really, really, really want to go to Dick Blick and spend my Christmas gift card. I don't really need anything, but um, I did sign up for a painting class with Pauline Agnew um, that starts in February. She has this ab abstract landscape and seascape series of classes that I've w been wanting to take at least one of them for ages. Of course, during the time that she had the last one, we literally were moving. I couldn't get to anything, much less have spare change to spend on a class. She's a great teacher, but her classes are a bit pricey, so um, <clears throat> that being said, I would recommend her if you want to learn more about how to paint um, interesting paintings and improve your skills. Her classes are for people of all ages and skill levels, and so I would definitely recommend her. Uh, I'll put her link below to her website. Anyway, I don't think I really need anything for the class. I got a lot of art supplies. Let's be real. You've all seen my room. If you haven't, I'll put a picture here somewhere. Um, but I'm going to review her class list just in case. And I may pick up a couple things for the class. I, um, I, don't, I don't really think I need anything, but um, we'll see. And then, you know, there's always something I want. It doesn't mean I need it. So... We're going to go do that, and then I'm going to go get the hair done and finally get all my white crazy roots covered up and have my color done professionally so it looks decent and um, no more DIY jobs. 
so Cassandra's gonna help me out from the Mint Lounge in Beaverton. Beaverton, be pretty sure it's Beaverton or Hillsboro. Anyway, she's not too far from Dickluck. I will include her information also in the description below. Really great hair, hair girl and um, she does a great job. Um, she did my trim the last time and she did a fabulous job by the way. So, I Hey guys, how are you today? It's very late in the evening already. It is Wednesday, January 16th. My dad's birthday. Everybody say happy birthday, dad. Um, his actual birthday. We did celebrate on Sunday as um, I already said, but anyway, I have been all day working on projects, chatting. Um, <clears throat> hang on, it's dark in here. Well, um, going through some pens and markers in my collection of things that I'm not using, that I'm gonna pass along before they get so old they're not good to anybody. Um, anyway, short story is it's been really busy today. I haven't gotten any mail today, which is weird. And I'm getting a text message from my husband. And evidently he's finishing up some stuff at work. Okay. Anyway, um, it's been a crazy day, uh, busy, um, but one that I didn't have to leave the house. It's weird not getting any mail. It does happen occasionally, but it's weird. Tomorrow's an even crazier day because I have doctor appointments and they're on different sides of town. And they're a few hours apart from each other. I'm kind of hoping I have time to run home and get a little bit of lunch. And if not, that I can at least run to the grocery store, grab a couple things that we need and something for dinner on Friday, come home, drop it off quick, grab a bottle of water and go out again. Or something like that. We'll see how it goes and how it plays out because I'll bring you all with me. But I have no idea. So that's going to be fun. And I don't know how much art I'm going to get in. Maybe some doctor's waiting room drawing. Um, that's something that may very well happen. We'll see while I'm waiting. All right. That's it for the moment. I'm going to go back downstairs after I turn off my computer right there and do some laundry. Anyway, that's it for the moment. I'll be back. Hey, guys. It's Thursday, January 17th. I know the day. <laughs> that's only that's only because it's already after lunch and I've already been out once to a doctor's appointment this morning and I have to go to another one later this afternoon. Nothing, no big deal, just checkups, you know, and I'm getting new doctors and, you know, the whole routine. So anyway, the only sucky part is they're new doctors so they want to do their own, you know, battery of baseline tests. Yeah, that's not fun. Anyway, I was saying before in... Um, I think my vlog and social media posts that I really needed something to store all my different small rulers. And a while back I got a um, shipment of paint stuff from DecoArt. Um, I'm a DecoArt helping artist, by the way. I'm loving their pouring medium. That's not what this is about, but I'm loving their pouring medium. So I'll link it below and it's very affordable, works really well, anyway. Um, when they sent me the shipment, they, um, and no, I'm not saying that because they send me pouring medium. I'm saying it because I really like the pouring medium. Anyway, when they sent me the pouring medium and some other stuff, this box was in there and it was flat. It had never been used. It was brand new. So I set it aside thinking I would use it for packing materials. And I realized it might be the right box to fit in a space at where I want to put the rulers and that the rulers might fit in it. And they do. I did have to masking tape you know, it into shape. Um, and um, I put the flaps up because it was only about this tall. So it's a little taller and a little more stable with the rulers in it. I glued the interior flaps down and taped them. I'm not even sure you can see it. Can you see that? And then I put E6000 in there and I taped it and then I put a bunch of weights in there and let it dry overnight. Now I'm gonna cover it with contact paper and make it look pretty. Um, I got some contact paper at Walmart today, and it's by Pioneer Woman, and it, the print looks like this. Isn't that cute? Label, so, get like an office, a pretty office supply label, or go into your spare, spare metal bits, or get a little pretty, make a pretty tag, and 
put it here on the end and then you could just make a whole series of these on your art room shelf that are storage. And you could probably just use, you know, boxes from your Amazon orders or, um, of course, you can buy boxes that are all the same size. If you're like me, you don't go and get a lot of art supplies at the store. You get a lot of them shipped to you, so you probably have boxes you can use. Or you have an office supply or someplace close by you can get some. Um, and I have a video that I did before for my creative year where I used, I have a, a Keurig uh, coffee machine and I buy a certain kind of coffee that comes in a box about this size and I've used it before for storage. So anyway, how cute is that? So ruler storage, it's a good thing. Okay, so I have these little um, kid sized um, not little kid size. They're little child size. Well, child's um, watercolor set. They're like teeny tiny. It's eight mini disc set. It's made in China. You can find these in a lot of different places. I actually got these online. I don't remember where, and I got them a really long time ago. I recently saw one that's a similar size but oval shaped um, when I was at Dick Blick, um, and they had it on one of their like spinner racks, impulse buy racks up in the front of the store. So the next time you're at maybe Daiso or the art supply store, look and see if they have these. I really like this because it's great to pop into my um, travel drawing kit or I can put it um, downstairs in my daily sketch kit. It doesn't take up a lot of room and when I want to add just a little bit of watercolor to something, um, I have just enough to do that. You aren't going to fit a ton of watercolors in here. Here's one where I took the original paints out and I put some tube colors in and let it dry, um, which we're going to do to the other one. I remembered last night um, that I had two of these. I was watching a new channel, new to me channel, Meow Meow Kapow, I think is the name. I'll put the link below. And she does a lot of different um, kind of travel kits. She likes making palettes, she said. Um, and I, she did one of these like 11 months ago or something. I did this a long time ago. Um, and I saw that somebody else did it. So it wasn't her idea or mine. It was somebody else's. And right now I don't remember who, um, but there's a lot of different videos about doing stuff like this on YouTube anyway. It has a little mixing area in the lid, um, just enough if you want to mix, but I tried to have a palette that I wouldn't require too much mixing. Um, that being said, um, it has you know two yellows, two blues, and two reds, and then I have a green in here because that's one color I really detest mixing, and then I have Payne's Gray instead of black or brown. Um, and there's enough colors in here I can make a nice purple or a nice brown. Um, so anyway, I... Um, Decided I really want to I keep moving this particular one like around into different different bags So that you know, that's silly. You have another one. Let's just do it to the other one so we're gonna set that one aside and The first thing you want to do is take the brush out because you don't need the brush. It's a cute little kids brush But yeah, I'm never gonna use it um, I'm gonna grab My jar of weird water <laughs> so um, when I have a fountain pen cartridge is almost empty, a big ballpoint pen that's empty or just about empty, I cut, I take the ink cartridge thing and put it in here. I take the big ballpoint pen apart, cut the nibs off, stick them in here so that all that stuff dissolves in the water. And at some point I get something that's dark blue or black, um, inky water, and then I will use that for other things. Anyway, um, I've done it before, I've done it many times. So we're gonna take these little kid um, watercolor cakes, pull some of the glue off, try to get some of it off anyway. It's like rubber cement and we're gonna drop them in. They'll dissolve in here. This is, um, by the way, a makeup tool. It's good for things like this. Especially when you have one like this one that doesn't want to come out. So when you get your palette, your little kid's travel palette, or mini palette, 
pull the old paints out. Usually they're, you know, they're kids paints, so they're usually like a bit chalky, but I mean, they're not horrible. This one isn't, it's not, you know, quality I want to really work with, but they're not bad. If you want to do something like this with your water, then you probably don't want to mix colors in the same jar. I don't care, so. Every now and then I make a bunch of homemade inks um, out of plant material, things like this, and then I will bottle them. Last time I gave them away, which I kind of regret doing, but that's a long story. Um, I think next time I will be selling them or passing them on to the design team. So now I'm gonna put the lid on really tightly and then and so you've got red, green, blue in there along with the black and the white. So look what's happening to what was blue, blue water. So they're gonna continue to dissolve in the water. And I'll keep adding things to it and at some point it's just gonna get thick and inky, which is perfect. Okay, now we need a baby wipe. Clean off my tool and I'm gonna clean out the watercolor palette as best that I can, and then pick some colors um, to put in here. I'm gonna go by the colors in the old one, which I don't remember the brand. I usually mark the brand on there, but I didn't in this case. I um, I don't know if they were, I have a random, sort of random box of uh, watercolor paint. They were probably either Koi or out of the random box. So I'm gonna get this really clean and I'll be right back. Okay, I got it as clean as it's gonna get, which is fine, it'll, it'll work. And um, just looking to see if that was glue on there. No, I think it's just water. And I cut a little piece of watercolor paper to fit in the lid. I used the other one as a template. So now I'm gonna just uh, pick colors that I think will work. I think I'm gonna pick from my Van Gogh colors at least to start. I need my reading glasses because I cannot see what I'm doing. So I'm going to find all the colors. I'm going to, again, I'm going to use the um, other set as a, as a, a guide for what colors to pick. So I I'll found what are pretty, I'm pretty sure are the colors and I was right. So I used mostly Van Gogh colors and then one Grumbacher. So in this mini set, I put uh, Van Gogh, Azo Yellow Light, Azo Yellow Deep, Permanent Yellow Green, Grumbacher Turquoise, Van Gogh Ultramarine Deep, Permanent Red Violet, Permanent Red Deep, yep, and Payne's Gray. So I'm gonna fill up this new palette and make my swatches. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're gonna just let it dry. I did add a little bit of the turquoise to this one. That tube is almost empty. Um, if I could fit the rest of what's in here in that, I would just empty this out. I don't think I can. Um, but anyway, you don't need much in these because it's really not intended to be a full gigantic watercolor kit. It's only intended to add a little color to a simple sketch in a small journal. Um, and when they dry down, they will not look so full when they dry down. They'll dry down to about um, two thirds of what they are now. Um, so anyway, there you go. I hope that gives you some ideas of what you can do. I am going to, what time is it? Go get ready to leave for my next doctor's appointment and I will talk to y'all later. I'll be back. Okay, doctor appointments are all done. Yay! Uh, at least for now. Unless, God forbid, they should find something wrong I'm not aware of. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. Um, so, fun fact, I was born with mitral valve prolapse. If you don't know what that is, Google it. Uh, my dad, and I'm red here because of the ultrasound. Um, my dad has it. His aunt had it, my great aunt. Um, one of his siblings has it. One of my siblings has it. Um, a whole bunch of cousins have it. All on the same side of the family. But it's not hereditary.
so I don't know what that's all about but anyway so I have to have it checked every few years um, or well once a year now that I'm getting older and so last year I had a stress test which I need to do every few years and then once a year I need to go in for echocardiogram so that's what I did today um, and then I also went to consult with a new gastroenterologist the doctors that do a colonoscopies because um, I may or may not be due for one of those they're reviewing my records and then we'll find out cross your fingers I don't have to have one they're not I've had two they're not fun if you've had one before you know what I'm talking about it's not the test itself it's the prep the prep is not fun anyway I'm all done with all of that for today as you saw if you're watching this clip I got a little bit of art in yay for me I'm gonna go into Fred Meyer right now and I'm going to go um, try to find something for dinner the husband's not in a good mood I guess he hasn't had a great week at work so I'm gonna talk to him for a little bit and see what he would like and try to get something easy I don't want to buy too many groceries we can stock up on stuff that we need over the weekend but I just want to get something for dinner basically so I'll be back Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Technically, I can say that because it's not noon yet. <laughs> it's 11.22 a.m. Um, Friday, January 18th, I think. I think. Um, I spent the morning straightening up the house and I did three more acrylic pours. Um, if you're watching this clip, you've probably seen the clip of the pours. Uh, not me doing them, but the result of them, and I really like the way they turned out. Anyway, um, I was trying to just keep myself busy. I had doctor appointments yesterday, which I think I said, mentioned already, and I got some of my old test results for things emailed to me because it's a little faster for them to do that for some reason with some doctors, and then I sent them on to the new doctor. Um, the problem with that is then I see them and then I don't know what understand what they say and then I get freaked out and my anxiety goes off the chart and I think I got it straightened out now with the help of the nurse over at Dr. Sachs's office thank you very much um, <sighs> I think I'm okay now anyway the cleaning lady is coming today so of course I straightened up before she came because you know it's what you do right because honestly because I don't want her to clean up the clutter I want her to do the other cleaning so um, there is a reason behind that so anyway I was cleaning up the clutter <clears throat> and um, I ran out to go get some pizza for dinner tonight from Papa Murphy's and I've got that in the car she's not coming yet until about noon so I had time I messaged her and said when are you coming she said not for like an hour. I said, oh good, I gotta go run an errand. I'll meet you at the house. Um, and what else? I'm working on my eyeball journal. I'll insert some pictures here. And I've got to do another eyeball today. Um, I'm having friends and family send uh, uh, pictures of their eyeballs in. It's so funny. And um, I'm not really asking or confirming what color I think their eyes are. I'm going by what I see in the picture, which is interesting. And um, I'm doing one sort of more traditional sketchy watercolory, and then I'm doing one more doodly and crazy uh, a la Debbie Weirs. And if you don't know who she is, I'll link her Facebook group or something down below. I don't know that she has a YouTube channel. I don't think she does. Um, but she did um, create a book of her art, which is fabulous, and I do have my copy on order. Um, and she does have a Facebook page, so I'll, and an Instagram too, I think. So I'll link what I can below. And, um, what else is going on today? I've got to finish laundry. Exciting, I know, right? Um, and then once these acrylic pores are dry, or dry enough to move to the drying rack, I 
need to clean off my table desperately because it is just acrylic pouring is fun but very messy even when you have stuff under your artwork that's all I can say about that <sighs> anyway uh, today is a quiet day um, so will the next couple of days I think which is good I'm, I'm alright with that <laughs> um, I'm not super excited about things I've seen that are coming out for 2019. Um, all the CHA uh, online video shares have started. Um, there are a few things I've purchased for myself, and by few, I mean few, like three. Um, some things from St Seth Apter, and then a couple of Tim Holtz dies, and one Tim Holtz stamp. That's all I've seen so far. Um, I don't understand why we need more ink or... I don't I don't get it um, so anyway I haven't seen a lot I'm still looking I wish I was there to be honest my friend Shannon Green is there I'll link her store below she is um, and her husband have created a new company and a new product that they've um, got the copyright on I believe and um, I wish them all the best I wish I was there to not only attend the show and you know take all the inspiration in but I wish I was there to help them um, it didn't work out this year but I really wish I was there to help them I hope I can get into my house we're having construction on the street outside my house and it is not fun getting in and out but the guys are doing their best and they're being accommodating and they're getting it done as fast as they can. <sighs> Welcome to Oregon. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've lost a couple pounds on the Lose It app and I'm working on doing that, uh, continuing to do that and getting healthier. I'm in an environment that promotes that, that I love in Oregon and I am in a place that I'm very happy and Although my anxiety is not always under control, it never has been, I feel less the need to eat my way through my anxiety than I did before. So that's a good thing. And I think my husband is loving our new place too. I hope he is, because we can't go back now. Uh, try to get in the garage and leave him room to get in. It's a challenge. Morning. It's Saturday morning, February. Um, I think February, holy cow. January 19th, I think. It's not February yet. Um, walking some mail to the mailbox that is for the old owner. So anyway, we are headed into Portland today. My little travel art bag is ready to be picked up from being repaired. And um, we need to get groceries and run some errands. My husband's going out of town for an overnight on Monday, so by the time you all see this, he'll be back, so I'm not worried about putting that out there anyway. Um, he's going back to California for work. So anyway, um, we need to go get some stuff for him to do that, and yeah, I'm going to go get some stuff done. I'm going to let him drive because I don't want to go into downtown by myself because, yeah, the driving makes me crazy. And... It is a beautiful, damp, chilly, crisp morning. I love that, my asthma loves that. And uh, I've got some art things cooking and drying and I've got some more doodles to do. I wanna do some more eyeballs. Somebody posted in one of my groups, they did an eyeball on a rock. I love that, I'm trying to get her to share it. It's a great idea. I might have to get a rock out of the garden and wash it off and do it. I might need to do an eyeball on a rock. It's just gonna be a thing. Yeah, I I'll should be say there was something else I was gonna say. I don't remember what it is. It's gone. Hopefully I'll remember later. I remember. So, for those of you who may not know, when you have a YouTube channel and you get to be a certain level, there are companies called multi-channel networks that will ask if they can help you um, and basically be a talent agent and help you with your channel, help you grow your channel, uh, help you maintain things. Anyway, I've had a multi-channel network for a little bit now. Um, to be honest, they haven't done much for me and I'm done. So February 3rd, I'm taking back control of my YouTube channel 
and keeping <laughs> what little bit of few cents I make here on YouTube to myself and not giving them any percentage. So there'll be maybe some changes. Uh, the most drastic thing I'm thinking, <sighs> unlisting all my videos on the YouTube channel, I know there's over a thousand, and only bringing back the ones you request, that's extreme thing, I doubt I'm gonna do, but it was a thought. I, I wanna take some pictures before I go back inside. Um, um, it was a thought. Um, improving the content, um, if there's anything in particular that you'd all like to see, tutorials you'd like to see, things you don't care for seeing anymore, I want you to let me know. I want you to leave something in the comments below. I'm going to post something over in the Facebook group, A Life of, Self, of Art and Self-Expression also. So I would like you to let me know what changes you'd like to see to the YouTube channel and how we can improve viewership on the channel and yeah, all of that stuff. So let me know. Give me your opinion. I am anxious to hear. But you know what? Um, after this morning, it's an ultra nasty comment that I had this morning. I, I'm not against negative comments, but have them be um, um, you know, comments that provide good criticism and growth and not negative nasty comments because you know there's just that doesn't help me, it doesn't help you. It's just unproductive. So uh, I'm not against comments where you say, well, I'm not, I don't really care for this, but maybe you could do that. I'm okay with that. Let me know. Just don't be nasty. There's no reason for that. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. All right, that's it for the moment. I'll be back. I also back. want to say that I'm not leaving the multi-channel network because I'm angry with them or anything. It's just not productive for me or them, and it's time to step away and try something else. Um, <laughs> I was... <sighs> I was tempted to, if they weren't going to release me, do something drastic, which is start a whole new YouTube channel. I think they're going to let me go, and we should know. It's supposed to happen on February 3rd, on or before February 3rd. If I was going to start a second channel, and this one remained art and vlogging, what would you want to have on the next second channel? Like, all these are questions I want to know. So let me know in the comments below or over in the Facebook group. Again, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, the link is below. The husband came upstairs to help me put my new chair together. He sort of took over the project, but that's okay. I'm gonna let him. Hey guys, so I wanted to share with you, I got my little suitcase back from the repair shop. The leather has been reconditioned, some of the hardware has been fixed or replaced, a bunch of new stitching has been done. He did a great job. I am going to need to update my little luggage tag because it has my old address on it. Um, but I'll probably be reusing the same tag and just popping open some stitches and inserting a new business card, which I have to order, so I haven't done that yet. Um, the secure strap fits really well. So I should say secure strap slash decorative strap fits really well. This is just a piece of um, painted canvas, by the way, sewn with um, loops on either end. Um, and these are just plastic clips you can get at the fabric store. And it's measured to just fit around here fairly snugly. And it's sort of an emergency thing in case I have it too full and a disaster happens and this pops open. I don't lose everything. One thing he had to do was replace the handle. He did very a very very good job his name is Bruce he works for Portland luggage company I will um, put his um, details in the description below but he did a great great job and um, it looks really good of course it's still you know got marks and you know it's got some wear and it's not a, it's a vintage bag so it's showing its age I'm okay with that that's one of the things I love about it open so much easier and uh, for the purposes of this video I have actually filled it with what I usually have in there when I'm traveling um, it had all this is all the original lining it's still in here um, and it's you know dirty and well worn and used and I shouldn't say dirty stained I love it um, so generally speaking when I'm home this is not in here this is my 
um, Chic Sparrow Traveler's Notebook, and I keep it in this pocket to not only protect the lever leather, but to be honest, um, over the month, which I need to work on January, but <laughs> I can just stuff things in here. They don't get lost. I know I want them in there, you know, whether they're parking receipts or movie tickets or I have a letter from my aunt that she sent me that I love, a card from a friend, um, and I just stuff them all in here and then sometime towards the end of the month, two or three times a month, I'll go through it and I'll fill up the notebook. But um, whether I'm home or I'm traveling, it's usually in this pocket that I made to go with it. Um, and then when I'm traveling, everything else that's in here is what I usually take. I always have a small thing of baby wipes. I always have some sort of small jar of a gel medium, usually extra heavy gel because I can actually attach really heavy objects to my journal like smashed pennies with this. I've done that and they stick really well. This is one of the golden small size sample jars and when it gets to be sort of empty then I just refill it from a bigger jar here at the house. Of course it's always in a Ziploc bag for when I'm traveling in case it explodes, which, which it never has. I have my Faber-Castell uh, folding water cup for watercolor. I do have a spare palette in here, which is fairly a new thing. I should take it out of plastic. Um, sometimes when I'm traveling, I need extra mixing space other than what's in my small watercolor palette, whichever one I've chosen to bring with me. So I got this to do that with. I sometimes use the hotel room plates and things. Don't tell them. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I thought I'd better have that. I have a couple of these art toolkit um, small watercolor kits. I do love them. You can get one at art-toolkit.com. I will again put a link in the description below. Um, it comes with its own version of a small like um, watercolor palette you can fill that's made from a credit card holder. I opt, opt not to do those. I prefer to have these small size watercolor palette boxes. Um, I buy them empty and then I fill them with the paints that I like. This one happens to be my graphite. Yeah, graphite. Um, and depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing and what I'm inspired to paint or think I might be inspired to paint, I grab a different one. I do have one that I usually take with me. It's downstairs right now that's filled with Koi and Daniel Smith watercolors. It's got a good basic selection of colors, but I also have one that's sort of muted desert colors. I have one that's um, bright. I have one that's metallic. So it just really depends on what mood I'm in and where I'm going. Most of the time I just take the basic one that happens to be downstairs. But it fits in here in this pocket. Now when you buy this little container, it also comes with um, a small journal, which I also don't keep in here. Um, I use this just for my tools. So I usually have a Pilot Varsity pen, which is uh, water soluble, a Sharpie pen, which is not water soluble, it's waterproof, a Uniball Signo. I usually carry a few regular paint brushes and a couple of Koi um, traveling water brushes, the ones with the stopper in them, that, so they come apart in two pieces for traveling. I've never had one leak before for me. I always have a small mini mister, a few small short mini pencils, colored pencils, a graphite pencil. Um, this comes with it for filling up the water brushes, but I generally don't use it. I may actually take this one out of here. I did, I did take it out of the other one too. Um, I do have a, a, some, I do have these, these brushes that are Raphael Precision. These are um, small mini like watercolor brushes, but I don't really use them a lot. I either use the Koi, which I have to order a few more of, or I have these, our Midas, Midas Touch um, traveling watercolor brushes. You get them in a set, it comes with a round around, I don't know what size, I can't read it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it comes with a flat. And it comes with a filbert. And you can tell I've used, I've used these quite a bit. 
Um, and these are really nice. And I just, I usually have these in here. I do have them in this small zippered pocket so that in case whatever I'm bringing in the watercolor, um, if this gets really full, I can take these out and they're safe and protected. But usually I just have these in here this way. <laughs> and then I just kind of squeeze it, zip it. <laughs> And you know, you get the idea. Sometimes I get it too full and I've got to take other stuff out, but um, you don't need this in here right now. Um, this, if nothing else, this holds all your tools really well. So even if your watercolor palette you want to bring with you is bigger than the case, um, then this holds all the tools really well. Um, then I have my travel, this is my travel journal. It always, it lives in the suitcase. Um, the other one is just for documenting life. This is for documenting my trips. I actually put all my luggage tags in the cover. I do paintings whenever I'm gone on a trip. Did I do one for South Carolina? I did. This is the art retreat I just went on in South Carolina. Um, so this always lives at the bottom of the case. Then I have, this is a bag from Muji, and it's actually a toiletries bag. But in it lives the rest of my basic supplies. So a travel pair of scissors, um, a selection of pens, including a Uniball Signo. Um, I probably have way too many brushes in here because I'm just noticing there's even more brushes in here. I have some R2 pens. There's a Scarlet Lime pen. Um, obviously, I haven't really been in here since this um, South Carolina trip, so it's probably too much stuff in there. And then on the other side is where I have the um, glues, tape runner, spare pair of reading glasses, because I am that old and that's a thing. Um, a mini stamp pad, a mini stapler, some staples, um, a, a date stamp, which I'm constantly forgetting to use, a couple of binder clips, um, some um, Neocolor 2 crayons, a few pocket stencils, and that sort of thing. You would have to really gear it towards what's going to work for you and what kind of art you want to do. But I like that... For me, all of my regular tools are in here, all of my watercolor tools are in here, and anything else that would maybe cross over between the two, I forgot to put the reading glasses back, is loose in between. So that will fit here. The gel medium fits inside the folding cup, and that fits here. Baby wipes here. And this, when it's in here, fits right here, and the whole thing closes up really nicely. Now, generally speaking, when I'm on the airplane, I don't open this. But that being said, it doesn't leave my sight. It stays um, with me. It goes under the seat in front of me. Um, it fits very nicely and I can fit my backpack or handbag next to it also under the seat in front of me um, without getting yelled at because my stuff is not far enough under the seat. Um, I don't like it being out of my sight. Um, but when I am on the plane, I have to have something to do. So in my backpack, I usually have, of course, my electronics and my iPad. But I usually have this bag, which is my daily drawing um, bag and it's the bag where I keep my journal where I write my daily pages um, I t which are also downstairs because I do them every day but this is the kit where I take this and I put the journals I'm currently working in in here and I have I don't need to grab anything else because this pencil case has everything else in it so this bag is a Delphonics bag again I'll link that link it in the description below um, I don't really use the outside pockets often because things fall out, especially for what I use this for because it goes in my backpack and traveling with me. Um, but I do keep a clipboard back here in case I'm somewhere where I don't have a hard surface to draw on. I do have a piece of an old t-shirt and a chamois 
tucked in one of the interior pockets. And other than my journals, everything else is in here. And in here I have a mini, I told you I like watercolor, right? Mini watercolor palette made out of a kid's watercolor palette. That's my husband fixing things downstairs. Um, I have a pencil sharpener. And I've got a selection of pen that, pens that I like. So I've got a feud ball. Uh, I've got a ballpoint pen. Uh, it's a Uniball Signo. Um, a couple of water brushes in different sizes. A mini mister. My favorite um, Bible gel high gliders. Some Muji um, gel uh, mark. Some Muji markers. Um, Uniball Signo white in a couple of sizes. And that's really it. I really don't need anything else. That works for me. And if I'm bringing this with the other kit, when I land wherever I land, I can combine the tools out of both of these to create some interesting art. So I just wanted to give you guys a brief show of what I bring with me in my travel kit and brag to you about how a good job Bruce did Again, I will link his information in the description below. He did a great job taking care of my little case. He said he may be able to make me another one. I don't know how much it's gonna cost. It's probably expensive because this thing is made out of leather, but I'm gonna ask him. I put my new chair together. It's in this front window, so I can sit up here in the mornings and have my coffee. It does work at the work table, slowly over there. So we'll be able to pull my desk chair over and if I have company we can pull the chair from the window over and also my husband's desk chair which is out there in the corner there we go so we did that today too I love the idea of just sitting here in the window with my cup of coffee in the morning and uh, I think that's a week I think so anyway it's been an interesting week full of highs and lows stress and anxiety and happiness but you know normal week right all right, that's it for the moment. And by the way, the humming and tools you hear in the background are my husband continuing work on the pantry closet because, you know, he's trying. It's, he's doing a great job. So that's it for right now. I'm going to go. If you ever have any questions, comments, or concerns about any of my videos, don't forget to leave something in the comments below. You can always message me on one of the many places I am on social media. There is a link in the description below called Linktree. Um, and then slash my name. If you click on it, it's every single place you can find me on the internet and places you can support the free content on this channel, including my Etsy shop, a tip jar, Patreon, and so many mores. Mores. So many more. So click on it and um, check it out. Uh, I also try to leave a link to my Facebook group where you can share your art and artistic endeavors and get some support and feedback. Um, positive, of course. And um, also, I, th I try to make sure that the link for our teaching group, My Creative Year, is in there too. Although, as I'm filming this, I'm not sure it is in there, but I think it is. If it's not, somebody let me know. Um, and um, yeah, so don't forget to do that too. All right, see you later. Now I'm going to go put my stuff away, go back downstairs and draw some more eyeballs. <laughs> I hope you are all having a great week. I hope you're having a great day. Um, do some art. Make someone smile, do something fun, and enjoy life. Uh, that's all for right now. Don't forget to go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.